As every year, it is my pleasure to stand before you on the Lord's Passover. You know, this is a day that all servants of God should be observing. They try to say, well, this is the Jews' Passover. And the uh, Christians take communion every Sunday, some every fourth, every fourth Sunday, some every other Sunday. Well, sisters and brothers, communion is not in the Bible, but Passover is in the Bible and is here for a reason. And we're going to look into it, sisters and brothers, because Passover is what salvation is all about. Anybody that believe in Jesus should, should observe the Passover. And this is one of the big mysteries of the whole world. They disassociate the Passover with Jesus. But what we're going to do, sisters and brothers, we're going to tie the Passover in with Jesus. Because they say, you know, that's for the Jews, and this is for the Christian, not realizing that there was no such thing as Christians before the apostles and the disciples of Jesus. And all of the Christians, sisters and brothers, all of the Christians before Peter baptized Cornelius and before Paul was set forth was Israelite. When the people was first called Christians in Antioch, there was not none, uh, there was not one non-Israelite in the church. But now look what has happened now, sisters and brothers. They've grabbed this thing, the Gentiles, and grabbed this thing. Who the Gentile, the son of Japhat? Who the child, children of Japhat? What we call Europeans and white folks. And the chief of them is in Rome. They have taken the word of God taking it off the table, and tell you that they are Christians and the Jews don't have nothing to do with Christ. I tell people all the time, go back and see who the apostles were. Go back and see who Jesus dealt with. He didn't de the only time he dealt with anybody outside of Israel was down in Samaria when he had this conversation with this woman. Otherwise, sisters and brothers, he dealt with nothing about Israel because he had to come and get Israel straight so Israel could go and get the rest of the world straight. We are the original Christian. Yes, we sir. gave the world Christianity. That's why we know that what is called Christianity nowadays is not. It's all that simple. So we're going to look at this Passover because these are the feasts that we keep. People keep other feasts. Well, what about Purim? What about the dedication? If you want to do it, so be it. But we only keep these feasts that the Lord gave us in the 23rd chapter of Leviticus because these feasts have something to do with salvation. And that's what this thing is all about anyway. God created this man to be just like him, the man dropped the ball and fell off the wagon. And when Jesus came, it's been a, a salvage operation ever since. That's where the word salvation comes. You salvage something that has been broken or fallen. But people don't understand anything. But we're going to deal with this Passover. So you'll know what you're doing. Anytime, anytime you do something, sisters and brothers, you need to know what it means. So we're going to start this in 23rd chapter, in the 23rd chapter of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 23. Because it's here, because the Lord wants you to know what it means. God, when he created man, he didn't make no separation between Israel and Christians. That's why he brought Israel they put Christianity on the table. But people hate the word, Israelites hate the word Christianity because they don't understand where it comes from. 
Like the old fable. Well, you know, on the day, day of Pentecost, that's when the church took over. Mm. That is the buzzword. That's when the Gentiles took over. Go and read the day of Pentecost and really look what the Bible said on the second chapter of Acts. It said there was Jews, yeah. devout men out of every nation under the sun. There was not one non-Israelite there. How many non-Israelites are here keeping the Passover now? Nothing has changed. Now we're going to start in Leviticus 23 and verse 1. 23 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, uh -huh. Concerning the feast of the Lord. Concerning the, concerning the feast of the Jews. Concerning the feast of the Lord. The Jews. The Lord. I guess I have to go with the book, don't I? I just want you all to understand that, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. Which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Uh-huh. Even these are my feasts. Uh-huh. Six the, days. Now, you say you're serving of God. Now, what's wrong with you serving the feast that God said is my feast? Right. You say you serve God, don't you? Right. Go ahead and read. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day of the Sabbath, the rest a holy convocation, you shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. In all of these feasts that points toward salvation, on the top of the list is the weekly Sabbath. Yes, sir. But people don't know how important that is, sister and brother. You know, they don't understand what the Sabbath day is pointing toward. It's toward, pointing toward the time when the Lord is going to rule his earth. He's going to set everything in order. And at the end of the Sabbath day, there will be no more species that's called man. But we don't know about that. Go ahead and read. Verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord. These are the feasts of who? Of the Lord. Go ahead. Even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their seasons. Even holy gatherings, which you shall proclaim in their season. That means you cannot get it out of season. You cannot have Passover every Sunday. Can't do it. Teach. You have to have it in its season. You do not have watermelons in December. <laughs> Which you shall proclaim in their season. Go ahead and read. In the 14th day of the first month at evening is the Lord's Passover. Wait a minute. He can have a date here, don't he? The 14th day, the 14th day, at what time? At evening. At evening. That's when the sun, when it turns dark, sisters and brothers. Now, it's not, Passover's not yet. Passover don't start until it gets dark. That's why we're going to teach you, but it, we will not take the bread and wine until it gets dark. Because we have to do that on the Passover. So, we are talking here, the Passover. What verse were we? That was uh, verse 5. Go ahead, uh, uh, verse 5. That was the end of verse 5, yes. Okay, now let's go and examine this Passover. Let's see what it really means. Let's go into Exodus, the 12th chapter. Exodus chapter 12. Well, we're going to have us a real good look at this, sisters and brothers. That's why I know that the people that have taught what is called Christianity in our days, don't have a clue what's going on in this Bible. But then they don't have a clue because they was not taught by the priest of God. It's all that simple. Exodus chapter 12, Exodus chapter 12, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 1. Because this is the 14th day of the month Abel and God's Month, sisters and brothers. That's why we make our own calendar. We find out the Gentiles don't know nothing about God's calendar. And we used to, in the old days, when we, uh, we used to just buy Esau's calendar, the people that call themselves Jews, until they changed the, the uh, uh, first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and I caught it. And I called them and asked them. They sent me by two, through two, three synagogues. And finally, they got me in a place, I guess they called it Benai Brit. And I talked to the rabbi there. And I asked him, 
then why is it that you changed the whole day? Oh, what, what are you talking about? What do you? I said, I am not asking you if you changed the Lord's high day. I'm asking you why you changed the Lord's half day. He said, well, uh, because we don't want the people to have back-to-back -back Sabbath day. You know what a back-to-back -back Sabbath day is? When a high day is a Sabbath and the next day is a weekly Sabbath. There you go. So what they did was they set it back to give people some room in between. Do that. But you take it when the Lord give it. So I asked him, who gave you the authority to change the Lord's Sabbath day? But before, I, before he come clean, though, I had, you know what I had to do to get him to come clean? I said, I adjure you in the name of the Lord. Tell me why you changed this day. He said, because we don't want the people to have back, back Sabbath day. I got that Jewish calendar and threw it away. And we've been making our own ever since. What's that, about 40 years ago? Yeah. So now, we're going to pick this up at verse 1, 12 and 1. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, uh -huh. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Go ahead. It shall be the first month of the year to you. That is the month Abel. Go ahead and read. Speaking unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, uh -huh. In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, uh -huh. according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Now, you're going to take a lamb according to, the, to uh, 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 each side of the family. Skip down to verse 5 and go ahead. Your lamb shall be without blemish. It's got to be perfect. Go ahead. A male of the first year. It's got to be the firstborn male. Go ahead. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Uh-huh. Now you look, sisters and brothers. That's why I tell brothers all the time. You get Hebrews now. Some of our Hebrew brothers, they're going to they be eating a lamb tonight. And I tell them, you know, because I know when we had a meat house, before Israel wouldn't uh, support it, we had to close it up. We used to sell, and they come to us, do you have lamb? I said, yeah, we got lamb. Well, we want to buy some lamb. So the business part says, hey, this is a business deal. That means we'll sell them the lamb. But the whole thing is, you do not eat the lamb anymore. But if you should eat the lamb, you have got, if you're going to do wrong, sisters and brothers, I will teach you how to do wrong right. How do you do wrong right? You got to get you a, a lamb of the first year, a male without blemish. That's that right. means you got to have your female male, and she got to have a male, firstborn. Then you got to put that lamb up for how long? Go ahead and read. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. But what are you, well, when do you pick, pick, pick it up? When you put it up? On the 10th day of right. the month. That's right. Then you can't kill it. Now you got to get this lamb and put it, put it in a cage or put it up on the 10th day of the month. And you, can keep, and you keep it up until the 14th day of the month. Right. At evening, go ahead and read. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Then you kill it when it's done. Okay? So if you want to do wrong right, I'm going to tell you how to do wrong right. Get your female lamb. Then when you have a male, you get that male. He got to be the first born. You got to examine him. Make sure you don't have no flaws or nothing. And you got to put him up on the 10th day right. and keep him there until the 14th day of the month, Abel. Then you kill him. You cannot go to a supermarket and buy you no lamb. <laughs> How do you know it is the firstborn? How do you know it's not a female? But then you bought a dead lamb. <laughs> Before the 14th day of the month, Abel. What I'm saying is, if you don't know how to do right, ask somebody. If you want to do it wrong anyway, I'll tell you how. I just told you how. So you got to put it up and kill it on the 14th day of the month, Abel. Go ahead and read. We're verse 7. And, and they shall take of the blood. And strike it on the two side posts uh -huh. and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. So now you got to get the blood of that same lamb. 
and you got to go to your apartment now <laughs> and put it on the side post and over the door. Well, Brother Boy, that might get me evicted. <laughs> it will get you evicted. <laughs> you might get away with it if you have your own house. But you got to do that. Yeah. Go ahead and read. And they shall eat the flesh of that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Now, that's what you have to do. Now, skip down to verse 10, and let's see why you're going to do that. Go ahead and read. And you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remained of it until the morning, you shall burn with fire. Uh huh. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. Go it ahead. It is the Lord's Passover. And you shall eat it in haste because this is the Lord's Passover. Go ahead and read. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night uh -huh. and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. So the Lord is going to go through Egypt and he's going to kill the firstborn of everything in, in Egypt. Of what? Go ahead and read. Both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. So I'm going to come through there and I'm going to kill every firstborn of every beast, every man. And what's going to happen? Go ahead and read. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And the blood shall be for you a token, a token of what? Of your faith. Yes. Just like the Lord told Israel, so uh, Abraham to circumcise everything in his house, and everything was born and bought. This shall be a token of the covenant. Yes. Token of what? Of your belief. Why did I say a token of your belief? Because if you believe the Lord, the blood was over your doorpost. If you didn't believe him, it was not over your doorpost. So we didn't get to have to go to Paul to find out that the just shall live by faith. Nope. The just have always lived by faith. Like Jesus told the woman, your faith has saved you. Yes, sir. Your faith has always saved you. Y'all understand? There's always been a one-on-one -on -one between you and God. It has not changed. But he said he's going to pass over. When he see the blood, what is he going to do? Again, 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. Uh -huh. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So the Passover actually means pass over. Yes. <laughs> no mysterious stuff there, is it? Nope. So when I see the blood, I'm going to pass over your house. And they ain't going to let the destroyer come into you. Go ahead and read. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Uh -huh. And you shall keep it a feast of the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. And so this is a feast, sisters and brothers. The only reason we're not eating the lamb and the bitter herb is because Jesus came. Yes. And we're going to show you that lamb represented him. Skip down to verse 21. Verse 21 and go ahead. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And kill the communion. And kill the Passover. Kill the sacrament. Kill the Passover. Oh, so we talking Passover here. Go ahead and read. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. Now I tell you, put that blood over and don't go out of your house until the morning. You know, we have some people out here teaching that the Passover and the first day of the unleavened bread is the same day. Uh -uh. You cannot stay in the house and cross the Red Sea at one time. <laughs> so people are so busy trying to bring together a lie until they forgot they didn't pay attention to what the real meaning here. That once you honor the blood, do not walk out from under it because if you do, make it plain. The destroyer is gonna make get it plain. you. Same thing with the blood of Jesus. Make it plain. If you walk out from under the blood of Jesus, the destroyer is waiting on you. He's gonna take you out. So 
Let's go into Matthew, the 26th chapter, and see what it was called in Jesus' day. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. That's why the law said to the law and the testimony. Yeah. The law and the testimony. If they speak not according to this, there is no light, which means no truth in them. The Lord put both of these books under one cover. You have to use them. Even use the Old Testament to prove the New Testament. But you use the New Testament to confirm the Old Testament. The Lord, he struck a master blow when he had these books put together. Matthew 26. We're going to start reading at verse 5, verse 1, rather. Matthew 26 and verse 1. Okay, read it. And it came to pass. When Jesus had finished all these things, he said unto his disciples, uh -huh. you know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, uh -huh. and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Now he said, after two days is the feast of the Passover. Brother, I, there ain't no feast. I said, look, he said the feast, but Jesus don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> and he said, the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Go ahead and read. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas. Go ahead. And consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. Uh-huh. Now, there's, oh, these are the priests now. These are religious people. Yeah. God-fearing people. They plotting on killing Jesus. Go ahead. What did they say? Go ahead and read. But, but they said, not on the feast day. Uh-huh. Lest there be an uproar among the people. But we can't kill him on the feast day now. What feast day? That was the next day, which is the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which we'll keep here which starts tomorrow night when the sun go down. Not on the feast day. Because if it do, the people going to be uproaring. In them days, Israel would stone you at the blink of an eye. <laughs> priest or no priest. <laughs> Skip down to verse 17 and go ahead. Now, this is where the confusion come in. Verse 17, go ahead. Now, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying unto him, where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? Now, people use this, brothers use this and say, now, see, it said the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the people asked where we would keep the Passover. If you go back to the 23rd chapter of Leviticus, yet we kept reading, we would have saw that the Feast of Unleavened Bread is on the 15th day of the month, A.B. Yes. Which we're going to deal with some. So how is it that you're going to say, the what it says is right there, but the Lord tell you to get wisdom and knowledge, but with all you're getting, get understanding. Yes. And understanding come by knowledge. You know what don't fit. Well, you know, boy flew in last night. Then you know if I flew in, I was on a plane. I had no wings. <laughs> because you know that men don't have wings. Knowledge trumps everything, you don't it? So why would we, you, we keep the Passover? Go ahead and read. 18. And he said, go into the city to such a man uh -huh. and say unto him, the master said, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. He said, now I want you to go and tell him that I'm going to keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. You know that he didn't say communion? No communion. He didn't say sacrament? Nope. He said the Passover. I'm going to keep it. At your house with my disciples. What verse was that? We have verse 19. Go ahead and read. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Go ahead. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as he, they did eat, he said, Verily I said to you that one of you shall betray me. Now we ain't going to deal with that. He sat down with the twelve. Now skip down to verse 26. Verse 26. And go ahead. And as they were eating. And as they were eating the Passover, go ahead and read. Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Go ahead. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it. Uh-huh. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Now, what happened was he took the blood, which rep uh, the, the wine which represented his blood, yeah. and the bread which represented his body. Remember, they put the blood of the lamb over the doorpost, right. and then they ate the flesh of the lamb, 
in that same house, didn't he? But now what he's doing is he's replacing the lamb with bread and the blood with wine. Yes. But it represents the same thing. What verse? We have verse 29. Go ahead. But I say unto you, uh-huh. I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. So he said, I ain't going to drink this no more. I'm not going to observe it no more, drink fruit of the vine until I drink it with you. In my father's kingdom. Why is it that he was going to wait until the father's kingdom before he had a Passover? Because the first thing is, when he comes, he's going to rule for a thousand years. But during that whole thousand years, you're going to have flesh and blood people that need to be saved. In other words, they got sins that need to be overlooked, need to be passed over. So you cannot celebrate the Passover until it is complete. And the only time it's complete is when his father's kingdom come and there is no more flesh and blood being. Y'all understand? But anyway, we got a lesson to show that too. It's called the eighth day. Yep. Hang around, you learn about it. So now, he said, I'm not going to eat it again until my father's kingdom. Now, I got brothers that argue with me. You see, See you, you're supposed to eat lamb. You're talking about that bread and wine. You know, that's, that's a new thing. Is it? In fact, Jesus was about to become the high priest again. So what did he do? He picked up his old tools. Let's go and find out what his old, old tools are. Let's go into Genesis, the 14th chapter. Genesis, the 14th chapter. Everything Jesus did was according to the law. With all that knowledge he had, and he was asking the elders questions and, they, and, they, and answering their questions at 12 years old, but he did not start ministering and preaching until he was 30. Why? Because that was the law. And you got boys running around 18, 7 years old, 8 years old preaching. He sure could preach it. Preach what? Children. He ain't old enough to make a baby, and he preaching. <laughs> Genesis 14. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Genesis 14 and verse 1. Because I read this to a uh, uh, brother that called himself Ben Levin, the son of Levi, a priest. That he took notes and left with a Shock on his face. Genesis 14, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Genesis 14 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Ariok, king of Elisar, uh-huh. Sadalamir, king of Elam, and Tadal, king of nations. Go ahead. That these made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and with Bershah, king of Gomorrah. Uh-huh. Shin- Shinab, king of Adma, and Shemeber, Shemeber, king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, which is Zoar. Now you got this king with all his allies come down there and made war against Sodom and Gomorrah and their allies because they used to get, uh, uh, you know, uh, what, what do you call it? The king used to pay you to keep you from fighting, killing them? Tribute. Tribute. But they stopped paying tribute. So they come down there and jump them. Go ahead and read. All these were joined together in the veil of Siddim, which is the salt sea. So, uh, so they joined, they started a wall. Let's see who lost the wall. Skip down to verse 10. Verse 10 and go ahead. And the veil of Siddim was full of slime pits. Uh-huh. And the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there. I guess they didn't want to deal with slime pits. You know how that is. Sodomite, but they ain't going to go there. <laughs> go ahead and read. And... <laughs> And they that remained fled to the mountain. And they that remained fled to the mountain. Go ahead and read. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way. So now, they did like all kings do. When they knock off your city or your nation, they take the best of everything and even people that are slaves and they go their way. But they made one mistake. What is that mistake? Go ahead. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. Now, Abram is Abraham. When they took his nephew, 
That's when they violated. If they had left Lot there, yeah. Abraham wouldn't have had an issue with him. But then what happened? Go ahead and read. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew. And told Abram the Hebrew. Yeah. That's why we call ourselves Hebrew Israelite. Because we are the children of Abraham. Abraham. Go ahead and read. And they what? told Abram the Hebrew. Go ahead. For he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eschol, and brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abram. Go ahead. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. Now, he did with 300 servants what four kings, five kings couldn't do. But right. go ahead and read. 15. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. Go ahead. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot, and his goods, and the women also, and the people. So he recovered everything, all the goods, and all the citizens. Go ahead and read. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Sodom. Go ahead. Sodom. And of the kings that were with him at the valley of Sheba, which is the Kingsdale. Uh, now, the king of Sodom went out to meet him. Go ahead. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the Most High God. So this was a different person. This was Melchizedek. He didn't bring the fatted calf or the fat bull. He brought simply bread and why? Eat. And he was the priest of the Most High God. Yes, sir. He met Abraham. Go ahead. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, uh -huh. possessor of heaven and earth. Now, blessed be Abram of the Most High God. That's the most high God that is the possessor of heaven and earth. Go ahead and read. And blessed be the most high God, uh -huh. which have delivered thine enemies, enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. So that's the second time tithes was paid. The first time tithes was paid was, in the, was with, uh, with uh, uh, Cain and Abel. Yes. People don't understand tithes been around a long time. But you got people running around saying, you ain't got the Levitical priesthood, so who going to collect the tithes? I said, who collected them before Levi? Make it plain. There you go. So who was this Melchizedek? He was a priest of the Most High God, and he didn't come with the fatted calf. He came with bread and wine. So when Jesus got ready, because Jesus and Melchizedek is one and the same. Yes. So when he got ready to take up his whole position as high priest, he brought out his whole tools, bread and wine which represent, the wine represent my blood and the bread represent my body. That simply means you got to obey. Your faith is what's going to deliver you now. I ain't going to kill no more animals for you. But let's look at him. Let's pursue this Melchizedek. Let's go into Hebrews, the seventh chapter. Hebrews chapter seven. And we're going to start reading that verse 1. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 1. Because I got a note in one of my Bible that Melchizedek was a Gentile king. <laughs> well, let's see if, if this backs this up. Verse 1, go ahead. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, uh -huh. who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed them. So we know we're talking about the same thing, same, one. same person, don't we? Go ahead. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. So we know how, how much tithe he paid, didn't he? Yes, sir. So, so Abraham knew you were supposed to pay a tenth before Levi was born. Teach. And you're going to tell me about it. You can't collect no tithe unless you got to leave. Come on, brother. You ain't showing you. Smartness, you're just showing me how dumb you are. Do Abraham pay the tenth part? Go ahead and read. First being by interpretation king of righteousness, uh -huh. and after that also king of Salem, Go ahead. which is king of peace. How many kings of righteousness and kings of peace can you have? One. Go ahead and read. 
Without father. Without father. Without mother. Without mother. Without descent. Without descent. Having neither beginning of days. No beginning of days. Nor end of life. Wait a minute. That don't sound like a Gentile king to me, does it? Can't be. Go ahead and read. But made like unto the son, made like unto the son of God, abided the priest continually. Now, if he was made like the son of God, a bride of teach priest continually, that means he can't have no break. That means that Jesus can't take up his priesthood because he don't die. He allowed himself to come in the flesh and take a quick nap and he woke up and grabbed his priesthood again. He loaned his priesthood to Levi and his kingsmanship to David. And in another lesson, we'll show you that. We have something on it. But keep reading. What verse? Verse 4. Go ahead. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth part of the spoils. Go ahead. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, who received the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law. Go ahead. That is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. Uh-huh. But he who descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. So this priest didn't come out of Levi. But skip down to verse 9 and go ahead. And as I may so say, Levi also who received tithes paid tithes in Abraham. You mean, why was that? Go ahead. For he was yet in the loins of his father. When Melchizedek met him. So Levi prayed ties to, to Melchizedek too, did. didn't he? Because they hadn't been born. Go ahead and read. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? So he said, for it the people received the law. What law? The law of animal sacrifice. Animal sacrifice, yes, sir. We have other lessons. This year. We can't show you everything. So now if these priests, if we could perfection by this priesthood, there would not have been a need for another priesthood. Not after all the old keys today. But go ahead and read. What verse? Verse 12. Go ahead. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. What law was it? That there was a law that you could not be a priest except you come out of Levi. And any tribe jump up and said he was a priest, he would get stoned to death. That was the law. But in order for Jesus to come, become high priest, the law had to be changed. Yes. That you can come from another tribe. Go ahead and read. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaining to another tribe uh -huh. of which no man gave attendance at the altar. What tribe was that? For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So Jesus came through the tribe of Judah, sisters and brothers. Jesus was a Jew. Yes. People don't even know who a Jew is. You know who a Jew is? One that come out of the tribe of Judah. That's it. That's all. Go ahead. And it is far, yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest. Go ahead. Who is made not after the law of carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. After the power of an endless life. That's why I know when Jesus came, he went to sleep and woke up. Don't you know the Bible called the dead sleep more? It's written there sleep more than the word dead in the Bible. Because you just took a nap. Jesus had to come and die for the sins of the people. He took a nap. But when he got back up, he was high priest yes. again. He was a priest, the priest of the most high God. He ain't got but one. But go ahead and read. Verse 17. For he testified. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. That's what he told Jesus. Skip down to verse 20 and go ahead. And inasmuch as not without an oath, he was made priest. Go ahead. For those priests were made without an oath. Now, the priest Levi was made without an oath. Go ahead and read. But this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now the Lord swore that to Jesus, and we're going to show you that. 
that y'all, you are a priest at the order of Melchizedek. So yes. go ahead. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. He was a better covenant made with Jesus. Go ahead and read. And they truly were many priests. And they pretty was truly was many priests. Why? Because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. Because they died. That's why the world went into shock when you got this pope over there. Yeah. Retired before this one. Whoa. Why was this a shock? Because the priest ain't supposed to retire. No. He's supposed to die out of office. Make it plain. So there was many priests that came out of Levi because they was not suffered to live. Y'all understand? Go ahead and read. Verse 24. But this man, because he continued ever. Because he do what? He Live forever because he continued the devil uh -huh. hath an unchangeable priesthood. So if that's the case, then how could Jesus get, become high priest? He could not take the priesthood from Melchizedek because he continued forever and his priesthood had no end. So in order for Jesus to become the high priest, he had to be a Melchizedek. Yes. There is no Room for anywhere else. Go ahead and read. 25. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost uh -huh. that come unto God by him, seeing he live, ever liveth to make intercession for them. Keep telling you, this guy don't die. Live forever to make intercession. Jesus cannot become high priest if he is not Melchizedek. Because he swore to Jesus. Thou art a priest forever. At the order of Melchizedek. Yes, sir. That was the oath that he made that he didn't make to Levi. So let's go and see where he made this oath. Let's go in the 110th chapter of Psalm. 110 chapter of Psalm. Make it plain. Because, sisters and brothers, the Lord put this here for us to understand this. And we won't be running around dealing with fairy tale playing church. And that's what the world is doing. Psalm 110. Psalm 110. And we're going to tie it all together, sisters and brothers. 110 chapter Psalms. We're going to read verse 1. Go ahead and read it. The Lord said unto my Lord, uh -huh. sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. See, now, we're going to tell you when he, show you when he said that. But what else did he say to him? Skip down to verse 4 and go ahead. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Now, this is the Lord has sworn to the Lord and will not change his mind. Go ahead and read. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So who was the Lord talking to? He was talking to Jesus. Yes. That's why the Lord, David said, the Lord said unto my Lord, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Go ahead and read. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. Now, the Lord said to the right hand of the Father, he going to do all that stuff? Yes, sir. He going to fill the places with the dead bodies? I think we're going to leave it there. But we know who the Lord is. So in order for Jesus to come and die for the people, being that he was already God, he needed a body. So let's go and see that. Let's go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. And we're going to start, we're going to read verse 1, and we're going to skip down. Hebrews 10 and verse 1. Hebrews 10 and verse 1. Okay, read it. For the law having a shadow of good things to come 
and not the very image of the things. When people start, see, that old law ain't no good. It's just a shadow of good things to come. I tell them, keep reading. Go ahead. Can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the commas they are too perfect. Oh, so that's the law of animal sacrifice, ain't it? Yes, sir. So this law could never with those sacrifices make the commas thereof perfect. What you mean perfect? That means you couldn't become God. There ain't no perfect man on the planet. I mean, it ain't. Even one eye is bigger than the other one. The foot is bigger than the other one. <laughs> you sweat and stink. That's why you have to take a bath. <laughs> Something perfect don't have to do none of that stuff. But why couldn't you? So the only thing you can become perfect, that's why Jesus, the people told Jesus, you know, uh, uh, Herod is going to kill you. You better yeah. hide. He said, I want you to tell that old fox, Herod. Today I heal the sick, and tomorrow I raise the dead, and on the third day I will be made perfect. That's when he come out the ground and he was God. Y'all understand? Yes, sir. So animals, bulls, and goats could not bring you to where God created you to be. Why? Skip down to verse five, verse four, rather, and read it. Go ahead. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. That's why, because they couldn't take away sin. And God ain't going to make no sin of God. I hope that's not too big to wrap your mind around. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world. When he, when he cometh into the world, he said. He said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Sacrifices and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me. He needed a body. Because something had to die, sisters and brothers. Each. He needed a body to die. We're going to get back here eventually, but let's go and show you what I'm talking about. Let's go and let's back up to Hebrews, the second chapter. Hebrews chapter 2. And we're going to start reading that verse 9. Jesus needed something to die. He was God. You can't kill God. You can't kill no spirit being. That's why God created the lake of fire for Satan and his angels. Yes. I can't kill you. I made you immortal, but I can torment you forever. And man messed around and got himself thrown in that lake of fire that was made for Satan and his angels, not man. I can read that to you. But he said, a body, he said, you didn't want no sacrifice and offering. So they can't remove sin. So a body you have prepared me. And we're going to start it because he needed something to die. Yes. Hebrews 2 and 9. Okay, read it. But we see Jesus. Uh-huh. Who was made a little lower than the angels. Who was made a little lower than the angels for what? For the suffering of death. For the suffering of death. That's what he needed a body for. Go ahead and read. Crowned with glory and honor. Uh -huh. That he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Go ahead. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things. And bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Now, most people overlook that it became him, uh, became him for whom are all things yes. and by whom are all things. Yes. Because he's the one that made all things. Father gave the commandments and he executed them. Go ahead and read. 11. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. Uh huh. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. So he's not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. Because we all want, we will be one, especially if you do this thing right. But skip down to verse 16, verse uh, 14 rather, yes. verse 14 and read it. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, uh -huh. he also himself likewise took part of the same. Wait a minute. You mean he didn't come by way of a man's seed? No, absolutely not. He said... As the children of flesh and blood, he also took part of the same. That means you got to be around first, don't it? Go ahead and read. That through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death, uh -huh. that is, the devil. Now he had the power, so he had to die to reverse this 
eternal death sentence that, Adam, that Satan put, us on, put on us in the Garden of Eden with yeah. Adam. He had to reverse it. He had to die to do that. Skip down to verse 16. So what did he take on him? Go ahead and read. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels, uh -huh. but he took on him the seed of Abraham. So verily, he took not on him the nature of angel, for he took on him the seed of Abraham. Think about it, sisters and brothers. He took on him the seed of Abraham. Was that the end of that? That was the end of that. So the Bible says he's the son of David, seed of David, but the Bible says he's also the seed of Abraham. Yes, sir. We're not talking physical seed, and I want you to understand in case somebody out there thinking, neither did he take reserve some sperm from Abraham or David down through the years and put it in Mary. What? Sound ridiculous, don't it? I thought it was until it come up. All it meant was he had a body made because God made, Father made him a body and when it happened to him, he put it in Abraham lineage. What? How did he do that? That's why Mary was a virgin. She come out of Abraham lineage. Couldn't come no place else. Or that would have killed all prophecy. So he took upon him the seed of Abraham. Why did he have to take on him the seed of Abraham? I'm just showing you how everything is tied in together. Let's go back to Genesis, the 22nd chapter. The Lord have tied this whole Bible together for our benefit, and nobody teaches it. That's why everybody's all over the place. You have heard a whole lot of things out the Bible, but the only thing you heard correctly in there is God and Jesus. Once you got away from that, it's up for grabs. Genesis chapter 22. Because if he took him on him a seed of Abraham, something had to make him do this. Because he had a lot of great patriots. You understand? Yes. Genesis 22, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Genesis 22 and verse 1. Okay, read. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. Uh -huh. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. Now he said, take you, your son, and your only son. Yes. Isaac, and get you into the land of Moriah. But Brother Boy, uh, Isaac wasn't Abraham's only son. No, he wasn't. Well, why is it that the Lord called him his only son? Because Isaac is the son of the covenant. And if you're not in a covenant with God, he don't know you. Is it through Isaac sell a sheep be called? Yes. What, what, did you finish that? The middle of two. Finish that. And offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I would tell thee of. He said, I want you to go and offer him upon the mountain that I uh, tell you. Abraham didn't even miss words. Skip down to verse 9. Let's see what he did. Go ahead and read. And they came to the place which God had told them of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Uh -huh. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. Go ahead. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. Go ahead. For now I know that thou fearest God. See, and thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. He said, so don't do nothing. Don't even lay a finger on the lad. Because now I know yes. that you fear me. People want to argue with me. Well, you know, God know everything. I ain't ain't uh, uh, kicking against that. But according to his words, it looked like he didn't know what Abraham was going to do here, did he? Now I know. Skip down. Verse 15 and go ahead. 
And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. Go ahead. And said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. Go ahead. For because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, that only son, uh -huh. that in blessing I will bless thee. Go ahead. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. Go ahead. And as the sand which is upon the seashore. Now that's a physical seed, but go ahead and read. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Uh huh. And in thy seed now, shall, shall now, all the nations of the earth be blessed. Now this is what you pay attention to. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. We're the seed of Abraham. Who is blessed in us? We move in, they, they move out the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. So whose seed is he talking about? This singular seed. Let's go into Galatians, the third chapter, and find out. Galatians chapter 3. Because it said he took up on him the seed of Abraham. Yes, sir. Now we see why he took up on the seed of Abraham, because the God told him, that in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So Jesus couldn't come through nobody else's lineage. He could not because God had already laid down the order of things. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. And we're going to start reading at verse 15. Galatians 3 and verse 15. Okay, go ahead. Brethren. I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet, if it be confirmed, no man disannul it or add it thereto. So this covenant he was talking about that God made with Abraham. He said, so it's a man covenant that's between man and God. But if it's confirmed, can't nobody add nothing to it or take nothing from it. It have to come just the way it, it was made in that day. Go ahead and read. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Uh-huh. He said not and to seize as a many, Go ahead. but as of one. He said not to seize as a many, but as of one. And who was that? Go and, ahead. And to thy seed, which is Christ. So that is the seed there that he go. said all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed in. Yes. Jesus. Because he come through the lineage of Abraham. Go ahead and read. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. So the law is talking about animal sacrifice. That couldn't change. So the animals couldn't save nobody. Right. Only the seed of Abraham could change. Skip down to verse 21. Verse 21. Go ahead. Is the law then against the promises of God? So what law is talking about? The law of animal sacrifice. Yes. Is it against the promise of God? Go ahead and read. God forbid. God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Didn't we read in Hebrews the 10th chapter that animal sacrifice could not make the commas thereof perfect? Never. So the life he's talking about is eternal life. So wasn't nothing wrong with the law, the only problem it had, it couldn't give life. Go ahead and read. But the scripture has concluded all under sin, uh -huh. that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. So everybody in sin, so that means everybody need the blood of Jesus. Yes. Go ahead and read. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. Before we start believing in God again, we was kept under the law. Go ahead and read. Shut up until the faith which you after was be revealed. Until Jesus came, sisters and brothers, and we start believing in him. Yes. So we was kept under the law of sacrifice, sisters and brothers. So now, so now, Jesus needed a body to die. So we find out that body came by way of Abraham's yes. seed. And also of David's seed. But there was not the seed. He just planted that body in somebody that came out of the lineage of David and Abraham, That's which it. was Mary. Had nothing to do with no sperm, sisters and brothers. Nothing. Had nothing to do with taking a piece of flesh from Abraham, uh, David, and cloned it. Nope. No. Why are you, why are you talking crazy, brother boy? Because I've heard some crazy talk, sisters and brothers. So let's go back to Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and finish oh. where he said, a body thou hast prepared me. So we know where the body came from. It came out of the lineage of Abraham. 
not out of the seed of Abraham. It came through the lineage. Even though the Lord said, in thy seed. You just have to know one thing. Like I said, like I said earlier, it said, boy, flow in. That means boy came in a plane. He didn't come in by way of wings on his back. Hebrews 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. That's where we left off at, where he said, body has thou prepared me. Verse 6, go ahead. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Go ahead. Then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written to me to do thy will, O God. Now, this is that's Jesus is the one that said, I come in the volume of the book. Yes. Go ahead and read. Above, when he says, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin, Thou wouldest not, Go ahead. neither had pleasure therein, which I offered by the law. He said, you didn't have no pleasure therein, because it offered by the law. What law? The law of animal sacrifice. Preachers have looked at this for years and, you, and, and tried to make that the commandment. Because uh -uh. they didn't have no understanding. Go ahead and read. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Uh -huh. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. That's the first covenant under which the law of animal sacrifice was under, that he might establish the second covenant. That's under his blood. That's why when Jesus died on the cross, yeah. the veil of the temple ripped from top to bottom. That was the end of animal sacrifice and the beginning of the new covenant. Don't you know we got some people right now Jeez. don't know that we are under Jeez. the new covenant? Make it plain, man. He, there was no grace period between the covenant change. Jesus died, veil ripped, boom, now you're under another covenant. Twinkling of an eye. Go ahead and read. Verse 10, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. That's why he needed a body. So it could be sacrificed. Now we are sanctified by the offering of of the body of Jesus Christ, one and for all. So that sacrifice had to take place or the whole creation would end up dying and would nobody come by. Let's go into Isaiah 56 chapter. Peach. Isaiah chapter 56. And we're going to look at it. 53. We want to, 53, I'm sorry, Isaiah chapter 53. Because we want to have a good look at this. This is what Passover is all about, so you can understand why we celebrate this. I want, it should be observant. I, want, I don't like the word celebrating, you know, because people start throwing parties and can on. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to do that, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't put nothing past this brother. Isaiah 53, and we're going to start reading that verse 1. Because what happened to Jesus had to happen. Otherwise, everybody's lost. 53 and 1. Isaiah 53, and we're going to start reading that verse 1. Okay, read it. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Not many. Go ahead. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Go ahead. And as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. So he wasn't no pretty boy. Go ahead. He was probably like me. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead and read. He is despised and rejected of men. He is despised and rejected of men. You think that's changed? No. The modern-day Christian lie on him, and Hebrew Israelites have never Liked it. Peace. Well, see, we don't like the name of Jesus. Where did the J come from? Look, Peter and them got beat for using the Hebrew name. Peace. Jeremiah got beat. Hit in the mouth. Put in stocks. And he said, I will never speak in his name again. He didn't speak English. But the Lord said in Isaiah 28 chapter that with a stammering lip, Yes. And another tongue will I speak to these people. He didn't say a specific, he said another because he knew he was going to scatter his people all over the creation. And whatever nation they find themselves in, that's whose language they're going to teach. 
So why are you arguing about Jesus, uh, Yahushua, <laughs> Yahshua, Yahwa? <laughs> and you're doing everything, all your time is spent, like the Lord said about the Pharisees, gagging at night. You don't even know how to become God. So he said, Whoa, whoa, what verse? Yeah, verse three. Verse three. Go ahead. I'm gonna stick to this lesson. Get out of me. Go ahead. He is despised and rejected of men. Uh huh. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as if it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Now you think that he is despised? This is talking about Jesus. We talking about? You think that he ain't despised? Go by some of them guys in Hebrews on the street, and just walk up just with the with the fringes and everything. Walk up to him and say. Jesus. <laughs> when they get through exploit deleting you, you're going to think of you says, Mama, smoke cigar. <laughs> but go ahead and read. Verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Uh-huh. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He borne our grief and he carried our sorrows. But still, he, we yet, he, uh, we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Go ahead. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Whose transgressions? Ours. Go ahead. He was bruised for our iniquities. Go ahead. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, uh -huh. and with his stripes we are healed. This certainly ain't talking about our zeal, is it? No, sir. It's talking about somebody that we've seen. He showed up in the New Testament. Go ahead and read. All we like sheep have gone astray. That means ain't nobody innocent. We read that in Hebrews. We've all fallen short of glory. Yes. That's why we don't judge one another. Like when Israel brought that woman caught in adultery before Jesus. He said, he that without sin let him cast the first stone. He didn't say he that committed adultery. So when he said that, everybody kind of like wandered off because everybody done committed some kind of sin. And you tell me you haven't, then I tell you you just committed one because you just lied. lied. <laughs> All we like sheep have gone astray. Go ahead. We have turned everyone to his own way. Go ahead. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And the Lord has laid on him the sin of everybody that's committed sin. That's in everybody on the planet. Skip now to verse 10 and go ahead. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Uh-huh. He hath put him to grief. Go ahead. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. It's pleased the Lord to bruise him. When he put him to grief, when he, you have made his soul an offering for sin. Hebrews 10 chapter said he made his body an offer to sin. Yes. So which one is it? Did he offer the soul or the body? Body and the soul is the same. One and the same. That's why you call learning something on your way to learning something. Think about this, sisters and brother. Now let's go into Matthew, the 27th chapter, and see when his body was offered for sin. Matthew chapter 27. Because you have to understand one thing, that everything that happened to Jesus had already been called by the prophets. And the Lord said, surely I would do nothing, nothing. but reveal my secrets to my prophets. So if you don't see Jesus, then you don't know nothing about prophecy. It's all that simple. Matthew 27, and we're going to start at verse 35. We're going to look at the offering that was made. 27 and 35. Okay, read it. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Everything that happened with Jesus was spoken by the prophet, sister and brother. So skip down to verse 46. Verse 46, and go ahead. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatani. Go ahead. That is to say, my God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? He had to say that because it was written. Skip down to verse 50. Verse 50 and go ahead. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. 
It means he simply died. Go ahead and read. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. So the veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom. Sisters and brothers, that was the end of animal sacrifice. No more. I'm not guessing that. I know that. And I'm going to show you why I know it. Let's go into Leviticus, the fourth chapter. Leviticus chapter 4. See, we don't have no time. That's why we read so many scriptures, sisters and brothers. We don't have no time for conversation. In fact, the older I get, got the less my conversation got because I got older and my memory got worse. So that means I got to stick to reading. Leviticus chapter 4. Leviticus chapter 4. <coughs> and we're going to start reading that verse 1. Leviticus 4 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done, and shall do against any of them, go ahead. If the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin which he has sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. So now if, if the people should, if souls should sin individual or the priest, they all got to do the same thing. Bring forth a young bullock without blemish before a for a sin offering. Go ahead and read. And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. And he's going to bring it before the door of the tabernacle. Of the congregation before the Lord, go ahead and read. And shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head and kill the bullock before the Lord. Go ahead. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. Then that blood again, right? Take of the bullock's blood and bring it before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Go ahead and read. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. So when they may kill him, he got to dip his finger in the blood and go in the sanctuary and go before the veil of the temple and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord. That's seven. That's the seven days that God gave man. Yes. Because the blood got to cover every day because man sinned every one of them. So skip down to verse 13 and go ahead. And if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance and the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly and they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which should not be done and are guilty. Go ahead. When the sin which they have sinned against it is known, then the congregation shall offer a young bullock for the sin and bring him before the tabernacle of the congregation. Go ahead. And the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullock before the Lord, and the bullock shall be killed before the Lord. Uh -huh. And the priest that is anointed shall bring of the bullock's blood to the tabernacle of the congregation, and the priest shall dip his finger in some of the blood and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord, even before the bell. So if the individual sin, if the priest sin, or if the whole nation sin, it all had to do one thing. They had to kill a young bullock, take his blood, and go before the veil of the temple and sprinkle it seven times. And what would happen? Skip down to verse 20. Verse 20 and go ahead. And he shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for a sin offering. So shall he do with this. And the priest shall make an atonement for them, and it shall be forgiven them. So that's how atonement was made. But look. If you had to go before the veil of the temple and sprinkle the blood, then what happened when the temple ripped when Jesus died on the cross? What happened? No more animal sacrifice. No more animal sacrifice. It's all that simple. That's why we don't kill animals nowadays. So when he died on the cross, that terminated the old covenant and brought in the new covenant. Yes, sir. Now let's go back to the 10th chapter of Hebrews. Because they could say that's where he had that body made that had that could die. Back to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. I could tell you this, but it's better when you read it with your own eye. So can't nobody take it away from me because somebody's going to try to take this away from me. Uh, 
I would say virgin can conceive. Well, you know, uh, uh, can no woman have no child by, uh, uh, without a man? But the book said virgin can conceive. Oh, man, you don't understand virgin just mean mate. Where do you get that from, mister? I'm telling you, this come from Israel. We just say anything off the top of our head. And look at you, see if you believe it. I remember that old, <laughs> you remember that old, old thing like, uh, 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 what do they call it, Kingfish? Yeah. I forgot the name of the movie it was on. All Black Show. King Back. Amos and Andy. Amos and Andy. Oh, 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 Kingfish was a lie. He'll tell you a lie, then he'll look at you and see if you go for it. And if you went for it, he got you bigger. <laughs> Hebrews 10, and let's start at verse 11, because it said 10, uh, but he, uh, 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 with the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all, verse 11, go ahead and read. And every priest standing daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. It can never take away sin. That's why he didn't like it. Go ahead. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, Set down on the right hand of God. He sat down on the right hand of God. Go ahead. From his forth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. So why was he expecting it? Because we read in the hundred and ten chapter song, David said, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemy thy footstool. When did he do that? After he died for the sins of the people. Teach. So David had already written it. That's why David said the Spirit of God spoke by me. Yeah. So now we know when he took his seat. He's sitting there right now, <laughs> and he's saying to make his enemies his footstool. You mean Jesus got enemies? You better bet so. Yes, sir. You just make sure that you ain't one of them. Because this cat is deadly. How do I know he's deadly? Because he drowned the whole world. Go ahead and read. Verse 14. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Uh huh. Well, the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he has said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. Go ahead. I will put my laws in their, into their hearts. That's the new covenant. Yes. I will put my laws in their heart. And in their minds will I write them. That's why we don't wear fringes now. Teach. Fringes was given us. To remind us not to sin against God so he won't have to have us stoned to death. Teach. He would tell me, well, that's our culture. How come he waited till a man was picking up sticks on the Sabbath day and they took him before Moses and Moses took him before the Lord and the Lord said, stone him to death. Once they killed him, then the Lord said, now I want you to wear some fringes with a cord of blue to remind you to keep my commandments. Didn't work. Didn't work. No. So he said, this man going to keep killing, sinning, so I'm going to have to keep killing, so I'm going to put another law on the table. I'm going to replace this sinning man with animals. So when a man sinned now, the animal would die for him. But when Jesus came, he terminated the animals and the fringes under the new covenant. Yes, sir. So this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those says, said the Lord, I will put my law in their hearts and write them in their mind. So you can get the fringes and lay it across the table of the chair. It don't work no more. It never worked. Go ahead and read. Verse 17. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Uh huh. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. There is no more offering for sin. That's why the veil of the temple ripped. Go ahead and read. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Oh, so that's how you got to enter in, by the blood of Jesus. Yes. Go ahead and read. By a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. So now Jesus' flesh is the veil now because the veil ripped. So what's going to happen now if you continue to sin? Skip down to verse 26 and go ahead. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remained no more sacrifice for sin. What you have to look for? But a certain fearful looking up for a judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour 
the adversary. And what is sin? Transgression of the law. So if you break the law willfully, I mean do it with intention, you may as well get you an asbestos suit. Because you're going to the lake of fire. Let's go into Romans, the 10th chapter. Romans chapter 10. Make it plain. Make it plain. Romans 10, and we're going to start at verse 1. Now when we read this, sister and brother, we're going to know what law was terminated. Romans 10 and verse 1. People read this. See, Christ was the end of the law. I said, which one? They don't know what to do with that. And like people say, well, when we go to heaven, I said, which one? They don't know what to do with that. Verse 1, go ahead and read. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Uh -huh. For I bear the record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. And we have a zeal. I'm going to tell you something. Ain't no communities on the planet have more churches in their in they, in they, in they community than we are. We got churches everywhere. But we ain't got no knowledge. No knowledge. All is zeal and no knowledge. Go ahead and read. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So you're ignorant of God's righteousness, so you have to come up with your own righteousness and your own sin. Sin is smoking and drinking. I said, read that to me. So they went about to establish their own righteousness. What verse are we? We have verse 4. Go ahead and read. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So what law did he end? Animal sacrifice. Law of animal sacrifice. He is the end, sisters and brothers, of that law. He is the end of that law. So now we know that Jesus was dying. Jesus died for the sins of the people. But nowadays, it's been teached by everybody that he died on Good Friday and rose Easter hmm. Sunday morning. Let's take a quick look at that. Let's show you why they think he died on Friday. Let's go into St. John, the 19th chapter. St. John, the 19th chapter. I didn't say nothing to you, brother, but be prepared to put up me some graphics on that three days and three nights now. Y'all supposed to be ready. You got to be ready at all time because I'm an old man. I forget now. Hey, John 19. I went in the office to get a, a mask. Walked out with the staff. <laughs> Tom Ross, ain't you supposed to get a staff? Oh, yeah. I went and got the staff. And I don't think I had the man. <laughs> so, you know, I got to read. You understand? But this is the reason why that they said Jesus died on Friday. Let's start this at verse 30. St. John chapter 19, and we're going to start reading at verse 30. 19 and 30. Go ahead and read. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Now, see, Jesus died. Yeah, he died. He said, it is finished. See, they had to give him vinegar, sister and brother, because prophecy said they gave him vinegar. That's why Jesus, before he said, I thirst, then they gave him vinegar. And once he gave him vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he dropped his head and he died. Go ahead and read. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation uh -huh. that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. Now, the Jews. Because it was the preparation. Pre preparation for what? The thing we're we going to be prepare preparing for tomorrow. The Passover is not over. The 14th day of the month is not over until it gets dark tomorrow. And what are we going to be preparing for? Unleavened the feast bread. of yes. unleavened bread. Because it was the pre preparation. And they didn't want him to be on the cross on the Sabbath day. Why? Go ahead and read. For that Sabbath day wasn't high day. And nobody paid no attention to that. For that Sabbath day was an high day. Finish the verse. Besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So now, because they said 
that that was before the Sabbath day, somebody failed to read, for that day was a high day. You have seven high Sabbath days, sisters and brothers. First day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the seventh day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, day of Pentecost, memorial of the blowing of the trumpet. Yes. Feast of Tabernacle, Until atonement. Uh, oh, Day of Atonement, rather. Feast of Tabernacle and the eighth day. They are all Sabbath days. So Jesus died on the 14th day, which is the day before the 15th, right? which was a Sabbath day, a high Sabbath. So from that time on, they said, well, you see, Jesus died on Good Friday. Oh, there's a reason. I even run into a Seventh-day Adventist and said, well, one thing I know. They right, because if he died before the Sabbath day, he had to die on the Friday. I said, it says, hide Sabbath, mister. So let's put this, let me show you what we're going to do now. Let's go into, uh, I want you to put on the screen if y'all have it. Because if he died on Good Friday, then he rose Easter Sunday morning. Let's see how many days we got out of that. Let me see if you can put it up. I know I should have worn, I went up there, but I, I visited y'all early, but wasn't nobody in there because everybody was there taking their time. Now look what's saying. Now if he died Friday, that means he was in there Friday night and Saturday night. He was in there Saturday daytime, and he was in there, uh-uh, he can't go to Sunday to say he rose Sunday, right? So the first thing is we got to do a little background so we can get some Understand of this. First thing, we got to find out when he died. Right. Let's go into Daniel's the ninth chapter and find out. Remember, the Lord said, surely he would do nothing but reveal his secrets to his prophets. Daniel's chapter 9. We show people this and they still don't change. I said, this, this is really something. I mean, I understand that's when the book says Satan have to see the whole world. He got a grip on the minds of the world. <laughs> he must have spikes in his hands so you can't slip out of them. <laughs> Daniel's 9 and verse 25. Daniel's 9 and verse 25. 9 and 25. Okay, go ahead. Know, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. So we know we're talking Messiah, the Prince. We're talking about Jesus, aren't we? Yes. So keep reading. We ain't going to get off into the, the commandments given and all that. Go ahead and read. The street shall be built again in the wall, even in troublous times. That, that was done in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. Go ahead and read. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. So when he get here, he's going to be cut off. Go ahead. But not for himself. Uh-huh. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood. And until the end of the war, desolations are determined. So Jesus is going to be cut off, but not for the prince. Messiah is going to be cut off, but not for himself. We know that means killed because he, he, he died for us, didn't he? Yes. Sir. Then the people of the prince came in and destroyed the city. Who were the people of the prince? Romans. The Romans. Jesus, Jesus died around 37 AD and 70 AD. Titus destroyed Jerusalem down to the ground. But go ahead and read. Verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Not make. Confirm. He's going to confirm the covenant with many for one week. Because they're teaching right now that this is talking about the, the uh, Antichrist. He's going to make a covenant with the people uh -uh. in Jerusalem. And the, make and, co and confirm are two different things, aren't they? Uh -huh. To make something is to bring it into existence the first time. Or strengthen something that has already been created. But to confirm. I mean, to, I mean to, to, to make something that's never been created, but to confirm is to, is to strengthen something that's already been put on yes, the table, sir. right? So he can concur, confirm the covenant with many for one week. Go ahead and read. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. What happened when he died on the cross? The bear was ripped, top to bottom. So they had two things. 
He, he taught for three and a half years and he was killed. But also, it has another man, and we're going to find out. But the thing about it is that he caused the sacrifices and the oblation to cease in the midst of the week. What is the midst of the week? That's Wednesday in our terms, right? We ain't going to go to the Hebrew thing. All day long, Wednesday's the middle of the week, right? So now, so we know then, when he caused the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, it was on, he died on the cross, didn't he? Right. Because we read that, that the veil of the temple ripped, didn't he? Right. And so the, when the priest went before the veil, he had to sprinkle the blood of the animal. But if the veil was not there, he had nowhere to sprinkle the blood, right? So if he had no place to sprinkle the blood, then why kill the animal? Cease means he caused it to stop. In the middle of the week. We established then that Jesus died in the middle of the week. Yes. Now let's see how long he's going to be in the grave. Let's go into Matthew, the 12th chapter. Matthew, chapter 12. Matthew, chapter 12. And we're going to start reading at verse 38. Matthew 12 and verse 38. Matthew 12 and 38. Okay, go ahead. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we will see a sign from thee. Now they wanted to sign whether he was the Messiah or not. But go ahead and read. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Go ahead. And there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. He said, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. But ain't no sign going to be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. Go ahead and read. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, Go ahead. so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. In other words, he's going to be in his grave for three days and three nights, right? Can you get three days and three nights from Good Friday to Easter Sunday morning? Nope. But if you got it from the midst of the week, you can do that. He said three days and three nights. Yes. Put it on the board. We're going to look at it. Now look at this, sisters and brothers. In the midst of the week, Wednesday, they put him in the grave. He was in there the nights, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night. In the daytime, he was in there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And he rose Saturday evening. Just before sundown, just yeah. before it got dark. Yes, sir. That's why when the women got to the supper car, let's see if he was still there. Let's go to St. John, the 20th chapter. St. John, chapter 20. I know I'm wearing y'all out, but Passover Teach. don't come but once a year. Teach. If okay. I can stand up and talk, y'all can sit down and listen. St. John chapter 20. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. And pay attention. St. John 20 and 1. Okay, go ahead. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene. That's Sunday. That's Sunday, the first day of the week. You don't believe it, look at your calendar. First day of the week cometh Magna, Mary Magdalene when? Early. Uh-huh. When it was yet dark. When it was yet dark. I'm going to interpret that word yet. That means still dark. Go ahead and read. Unto the sepulcher. Uh -huh. And see the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Uh -huh. Then she running and coming to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Now, how come they didn't find him? Because he rose Saturday evening just before sundown. Yes. And when they got to the sepulcher, he was still dark. So why is it? That every Easter Sunday morning, you get churches get up early in the morning and have sunrise service. Why is it? I'm going to tell you why. Because they worship in the sun, not Jesus. Jesus rose Saturday evening before the sun, uh, uh, before the sun went down, before it got dark. 
uh, wrote, uh, you know, because he couldn't go to Saturday night, then he would have called himself a liar. He would have been three days That's and right. four nights. Okay? So now, we're going to eat this Passover, sister and brother, but I want you to find out, I want you to understand who can eat this Passover and who cannot. Let's go into Exodus 12 chapter again. You're just about out of here. Exodus 12. Exodus chapter 12. And we're going to start at verse 43. Exodus 12 and 43. Exodus 12 and 43. This is real important here. You need to know this. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. Uh -huh. There shall no stranger eat thereof. There shall no stranger eat thereof. Go ahead. But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. So he can't eat of it until unless he's circumcised. Got to be circumcised. Skip down to verse 48 and go ahead. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. And now, he now say, if a stranger that's among you, because Israel, it didn't talk about Israel, because it was automatic that Israel was circumcised. That wasn't, even when the argument over circumcision in the New Testament, it was never about Israel, it was about the stranger, the non-Israelite. Now, you got brothers running around talking about you ain't got to be circumcised. You Israel, partner. You ain't never got a, 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 a pass. So now, if a stranger let all his male be circumcised, right. go ahead and read. And then let him come near and keep it. And let him come near and keep it, go ahead. And he shall be as one that is born in the land. Uh huh. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. Do I have to interpret what no mean? For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. So we got some brothers in the house or in the other camps that are here. If you are not circumcised, do not walk up and take the bread and the wine. Good to listen to the lesson so you know what it's about. But finish that. What law shall be to him that is homeborn and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you? One law shall be to Israel and to the non-Israelites that's among us. One law. That's the end of that. Yep. One law. So in order for you to take part in the Passover, you need to be circumcised. Now, let me look and show you the spiritual side of this. Just like the lamb represented Jesus that they killed, right? Yeah. Let's see who the real circumcision is. Let's go into Rome, uh, 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Yes. You need to know this, Christian, modern day Christian, because the original Christians know this. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to read one verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to read one verse. And this tells it all. And then you can tell me whether you can eat it or not. 1 Corinthians 5 and verse 7. 5 and verse 7. Read it. Purge out therefore the old leaven. Purge out therefore the old leaven. That you may be a new lump. That you might be a new lump. Go ahead. As you are a leaven. Uh-huh. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Wait a minute. Who's our Passover? Jesus. So just like you couldn't take part of the circumcision, so all the Hebrews were circumcised when they, when they put the dough clothes, blood over the dough clothes in Egypt. All of them. Because they kept the law. Therefore, they was all protected under the blood of the Passover. So if you want to be protected or take part in Jesus because he is the Passover, you got to be circumcised. There's, no, there's nothing to debate about that. 
because Jesus is the Passover. Let's go into Galatians, the third chapter. Galatians chapter 3. I'm just putting, I'm just putting some real uh, uh, knowledge on the table. I hope, I hope that somebody take this because this means it. When I found that out, when I come into this word, I think I'm about 24 years old, 23, 24. I hurry up and got circumcised. Amen. Yes, sir. Galatians 3 is because I knew who the real Passover was. 3 and 26. Galatians 3, and we're going to start at verse 26. Okay, read it. But you are all the children of God by faith. In Christ Jesus. That's how you become the child of God, by believing in Jesus. Go ahead. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Go ahead. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Uh-huh. There is neither bond nor free. Go ahead. There is neither male nor female. Go ahead. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. So you are all one in Christ Jesus. And what did it say here? Go ahead and read. And if you be Christ, uh-huh. then are you Abraham's seed? And heirs according to the promise. Oh, so if you be Christ, then you're Abraham's seed. Yeah. And heirs according to the promise, because to Abraham's seed was the promise made. Nobody else. You understand? So now let's go and see then what Abraham's seed must do. Let's go back to Genesis, the 17th chapter, and I got one more place after this. And we'll let you eat this bread and wine, and you can go home. Genesis 17. And we're going to start at verse 1. Genesis 17 and verse 1. You know, sisters and brothers, nothing changed. That's why the Lord said, surely he would do nothing but reveal his secrets to his prophet. Genesis 17 and verse 1. Let me tell you, a lot of some people call on the phone. I want to, take, want to come and keep the Passover. Come on over here. Because before you drink that red and rind, you're going to know what you're dealing with here. And you're going to have to wait on it patiently. I will not give Passover to an uninformed person. Because you need to know what you're getting into. Yes, sir. 17 and 1. Go ahead. And when Abram was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Go ahead. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Uh -huh. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Because he's talking about not only physical, but he's a father of the faithful. Go ahead and read. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, uh -huh. but thy name shall be called be Abraham. Go ahead. For a father of many nations have I made thee, uh -huh. and I will make thy seed exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Uh -huh. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Now let's look at this covenant. Skip down to verse 9 and go ahead. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. Uh -huh. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Every is absolute, ain't it? Absolute. Go ahead and read. And you shall circumcise the flesh in your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. Now, it's just like that blood was a token of the, of, of, of the Passover, wasn't it? Right. And the people that the Lord paid attention to that token, those people got saved, didn't they? Yes, sir. Is it a token between me and you? Go ahead and read. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child of your generation. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. I mean, everybody. One that's in your house or bought with money of any stranger that is not of your seed. Go ahead and read. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. Those are some strong words, ain't it? Yeah. Must needs, those are two absolutes, back to back. 
must needs be circumcised. Go ahead and read. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Go ahead. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Do I have to, uh, do I have to interpret that? So, sisters and brothers, if you want to be heirs according to Abraham's seed, you have to go through Jesus and get baptized into Jesus. You might eat this Passover without being baptized, but you ain't going to get salvation without getting baptized. That's why I tell people, you ain't baptized, you can still eat this Passover because the only restriction to eat the Passover was being circumcised. So now, but the Lord, when he changed it, he said, eat, take this bread, and eat it, this is my body, and drink this wine. This is my blood that's shed for many. Yes. But this also have another meaning, sisters and brothers. That means also you got to walk in this word. Let's go to the last place. Jeez. Let's go into St. John, the sixth chapter. St. John, chapter six. This is the last place. Then I'm going to pray over the Passover from here. Then we're going to turn out. And then we all at Passover tables are set up out there, and we're going to all have the bread and wine, and we're going to go home. And praise God and feel good, because we have carried out his commandment yes, sir. another time. St. <laughs> John chapter 6. St. John chapter 6. And we're going to start reading at verse 51. St. John chapter 6 and verse 51. See, this Passover means a whole lot of stuff, sisters and brother, when you're talking about eating the flesh and drinking the, and drinking the blood, or eating the bread and drinking the wine. It have a broad, a broad meaning, sisters and brother. Verse 51, go ahead. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Uh -huh. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Uh -huh. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. He said, he's a living bread. So any man eating this bread, they're going to live forever because the bread he's going to give them is his flesh. Go ahead and read. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, uh -huh. saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Uh -huh. Then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Wait a minute. But it's getting serious, ain't it? So what represented his flesh? The bread, didn't it? Yes. What represented his blood? The wine, didn't it? Yes. So except you do that, there ain't no life in you. Go ahead and read. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. He tell you you're going to get eternal life, and he even, go, he even told you when he's going to raise you up to get it. Go ahead and read. For my flesh is meat indeed, uh -huh. and my blood is drink indeed. Go ahead. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. So he keep telling you, eat my flesh and drink my blood. You dwell in me and I in you. Yes. Skip now to verse 60 and go ahead. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Uh-huh. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, does this offend you? He's, even his disciples, they didn't understand that. So he said, does this offend you? So I'm going to come clean with you. Skip down to verse 63 and read it. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Uh -huh. The flesh profit in nothing. Go ahead. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. He said, I'm not telling you to eat my flesh and drink my blood. No. I'm telling you to obey my word. Yes. Because he said, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profit is nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. In other words, listen to me. Yes. Skip down to verse 66 and go ahead. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with them. Go ahead. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. 
He said, will y'all leave me now? Lord, whom shall we go? You got the words of eternal life. In other words, obey my word. And you sitting right here on Passover is obeying his word for this night. Thank you for your time. Thank you. 